everyone, and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to be talking about adding ASP.NET Core identity to our projects. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go ahead and add the NuGet packages to our project so that we get all of the libraries that we need for ASP.NET Core identity. Next, we'll need to go ahead and create the user class that inherits from the identity user class that we talked about in the previous video. Then finally, we're going to go ahead and need to configure the startup class so that the services and the application builder are going to implement ASP.NET Core identity into our application. So let's go ahead and hop right into Visual Studio and let's get started by adding ASP.NET Core identity to our project. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and download the NuGet packages and install them into our, our ASP.NET Core application. Now there are several different ways that you can get the NuGet packages. I just kind of want to go over one that we've actually already done before and I think this is a really neat feature of Visual Studio 2015 and .NET Core. And that is if I go to the services object, this is the services parameter that is being passed in as a parameter to the configure services method on our startup class, we can use the add identity method. And the add identity method is not going to be currently installed on our application. It's going to give us a red squiggly line. But of course, if we do a control period, we're going to get some suggestions by IntelliSense. Now, one of the suggestions by IntelliSense is to go ahead and add the package for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET Core dot identity version 1.00. Now I could go ahead and add it right here. I could go ahead and click on that and add the NuGet package to our project right from here, which I think is really, really nice. But there are some components that do not come with this package that I want to go ahead and utilize. So for right now, I'm gonna skip doing that. I'm not gonna do that for right now. And instead I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of our project uh, so that we don't accidentally go ahead and get that, uh, get that NuGet package just yet. Now the next thing I'm going to do and show you how to get a NuGet package is we can actually open up our browser and we can go to NuGet.org. So we'll just wait for my browser to pop up here and we'll go ahead and go to... No, we don't want to go to the site. Hold on here. Okay, we're going to go to NuGet.org. So now here on NuGet.org this is actually uh, a really good repository for where pretty much all the NuGet packages that you'll ever need to find are going to be available. This is where all the public NuGet packages kind of get published to. And so you can see there's over 71,000 unique NuGet packages on NuGet.org. And the one that we're going to be looking for is the Microsoft.ASPNetCore.Identity. And that was the same package name that we had that prompted up here in our startup class when we tried to do services.addidentity. So I just went ahead and did a search for that same package out here on nougat.org. And we actually find that there are seven different packages that we could get. There's a current one, which is version 1.1 of Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity, which is the same package that was originally wanted to be installed here when I did add identity method. But that's not the one that I want to get. Uh, and we'll talk about this next one here. This is the one that I actually want to get, the ASP.NET Core Identity dot Entity Framework Core. And that's because this one, this NuGet package, integrates the elements of Entity Framework Core with ASP.NET Core Identity. And that's because I want to store, I want to uh, do the user, or the, the persistence of the user data back to a Microsoft SQL Server, and that requires Entity Framework Core to do that persistence, or that's Entity Framework Core is gonna be my ORM that relates back to the SQL Server. There are some other packages that you could do, like one for MongoDB, looks like uh, one called Leonard.ASP.NET Core Identity, and it has some improvements on the core identity functionality. There's a multi-tenancy one, which looks pretty interesting. Uh, so you could pick one of these other ones, but honestly, for what we're doing, 
uh, and really to try to avoid getting too confused by some of these other packages, I'm going to pick the one that says Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity Entity Framework. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. And this will take us to the installation page or give us some instructions about how to install uh, the identity.entity framework core NuGet package. Now I could just go ahead and copy this line here of install package and then all the way to entity framework here. Uh, I don't want to get all of this in fact because I kind of want to, uh, I just want to show you where you can enter this in at. I'm going to use a different method to actually install this. But I just gonna, I'm just going to show you that you could copy this whole line here and you could go to your NuGet package manager console window and to get there you can go to tools and then under NuGet package manager you can select package manager console and from here I could just go ahead and paste that install hyphen package microsoft.aspnet core dot identity dot entity framework core and if I hit enter right now, that would go ahead and do the installation process of this NuGet package. But I don't quite want to do that just yet either. So let me just go ahead and take that out for now. So again, I don't accidentally install it at the wrong time. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you, though, about this package is if we scroll down here to the dependencies, you'll notice under the .NET Standard 1.3 section, there is a dependency on Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity version 1.1 or greater. So this dependency on Microsoft.ASP.NET Core Identity, you might recognize that that particular dependency was the same one that came up when we tried to do the services dot add identity. Okay, when we tried to do this and we got the dot not, uh, the control dot, we wanted to add the package for Microsoft.ASP.NET uh, Core Identity. But what this is saying is that the Entity Framework Core version, or the Entity Framework Core extension of Identity, has a dependency on that very same package. And what'll happen is when we install this Entity Framework Core package, because it knows that this is a dependency, it will go ahead and go out and find all of these dependencies for us and install them as well. So that's the reason why I didn't have to go ahead and install the package right here. I was going to go ahead and get that anyway when I went ahead and installed the full Entity Framework Core extension of the Identity NuGet package. So I'm going to ignore that for right now though as well. And instead of doing the NuGet package manager, I'm going to show you yet another way that you can install the same NuGet package. And that is probably the more popular one, I think the one that most people are very comfortable with because it gives you a nice little user interface. And that is if I go to the References section of the Contoso RTM application, and I'm just going to right click here on References and select Manage NuGet Packages. Now this is going to open up the NuGet Package Manager, which is just a nice little user interface to essentially pull the same NuGet packages that we can find here on NuGet.org. And you can see even the list that comes uh, over here, we have a package source that says it's from NuGet.org. So NuGet.org is giving us all of these packages that we could potentially install. And again, the one that we want to install is Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.Identity. And I want to get the Entity Framework Core, and you can see it's right there, Entity Framework Core. So I could select it here and just click on Install, and that would also go ahead and install the ASP.NET Core, uh, or the ASP.NET Core.Identity.Entity Framework Core NuGet package. So that's yet another way that you could go ahead and install the NuGet package, but I'm going to show you one more way, and this is the way I currently like to do it. It's just kind of nice. It's a nice little way to go about this. And unfortunately, this may actually be removed from future implementations of ASP.NET Core. Uh, I hope it doesn't go away completely. I hope there's some sort of implementation of this because it's really, really nice for people who are used to working with like Node.js, that sort of thing. If I open up my project.json file, I'm just going to 
double click on it to open it up here. We have all of our dependencies for this project listed here. And these are what we call global dependencies for our .NET Core application. And what I'm gonna do is all I need to do is just add this as a dependency. I can just type it out. I can do the, in quotation marks, I'm gonna do Microsoft dot ASP net core. And we're looking for identity dot entity framework core. And we can see that we have IntelliSense about the different version numbers that we could potentially install. I'm gonna go ahead and select the latest one, which is 1.10. And once I've done that, if I click on the save button, this is gonna save everything, all the changes that I've made so far, we'll now have uh, our project go ahead and execute a command in the background that is gonna go ahead and restore all of the packages in our application. And I'm gonna click on the little output window and we'll see down here in the output window that once I've done this, it's gonna go ahead and search for all of the dependencies that this Entity Framework Core NuGet package requires. And it's gonna go ahead and download them and install them. Now, I'm not gonna make you sit here and wait and watch all of those go by. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the video at this point and once everything is downloaded and installed, I'll go ahead and resume the video. Oh, look at the cute little dog wanting to go for a ride. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> so now that all of the NuGet packages have been installed into our application and we've got uh, what we need in order to get ASP.NET Core Identity up and running, we need to go ahead and add a user that is a user class to this project that will be the class that everyone will essentially be assigned to when they try to log into this application, right? It's some sort of class to identify uh, what each user is. So in my models folder, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new class item. So we're gonna add class, and I'm gonna go ahead and name this class application user. And now we need to inherit this application user class from the class called identity user. Okay, and this is of course something we're gonna to need to bring in a using statement for, so I'm just gonna hit control period, and that's gonna give us the using for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.identity.entity framework core. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And now this is where you have the option to add some new fields for your user. Uh, there's gonna be some some default things like passwords and usernames and that sort of thing that's gonna be all automatically created and generated by this. But if we wanted to add things like, say we wanna keep track of their birthdays, so we would do like a public date time birth date. Okay, and we'll do a get set. And maybe you wanna keep track of, I don't know, their favorite toy, so we'll do a string toy, a uh, favorite toy. Okay, uh, whatever you might want to store about these users, you could go ahead and add right here within your application user class. And of course, it just needs to inherit from this identity user class to work. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out these usings. So I'm just going to do a remove and sort. We'll save those changes. And now we have a user class that each one of our users of our application, we will need to basically have an instance of for each user. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and add this identity user or this application user to the context that is going to be utilizing this application user. So what do we need to do? Well, let's go ahead and go to the Contoso context because this is actually where I want to, uh, this database, the Contoso context database, is where I'm going to store all of the information about my users. But now that we've switched over to ASP.NET Core Identity, we need to make a change here to the Contoso context because our identity, our, our ASP.NET Core Identity with the integration of Entity Framework requires a special DB context class. 
So we can no longer derive from just DB context, but instead we want to, uh, we want to um, inherit from identity DB context. And so I need to bring in a using here for that as well. And we can see using Microsoft.ASP.NET Core Identity Entity Framework Core. And unfortunately, well, I guess it, it does compile here, but I also need to specify what the user class is going to be as a type parameter to this identity DB context. So I'm just going to add as a type parameter, and here we go. Here you can see T user. So I can pass in a T user. I could do a T user role and key, and I could do T user role key user claim user role. So there's a big long one that we could have there instead. But I'm just going to do the simple one where we pass in the T user, which is going to be the application user class that I created. And you can see that there is a constraint on the usage of identity DB context. You can see right here it says where T user is a type of identity user. So that's why we needed to inherit that application user from the uh, identity user class. Okay. So that's how that all kind of fits together. We'll go ahead and save those changes to our context. And now let's hop on over to our startup class. And now that we've got all of our dependencies pulled in, we can go ahead and go to our services object and we can do add identity. Now the add identity method does require some type parameters. So we can see a T user and a T role. So, for T user, we're going to once again use the application user class. Now, after that, we have as a second type parameter, we need to pass in a T role. And it looks like it's not giving me the IntelliSense that I was hoping to get from this. But essentially, we need to pass in some sort of uh, T role to this uh, add identity method. Uh, now, roles are kind of primitive. They're kind of something that you're not really going to find probably moving forward with ASP.NET Core Identity. They are really just uh, legacy items from previous versions of ASP.NET Core Identity, or I should say ASP.NET Identity. In previous versions, you would have the ability to assign different users to different roles and grant them access based upon those roles. Now that capability is still available in ASP.NET Core Identity, but this means that you're not really using claims-based authentication to do things. You're using their roles to do it. Uh, you can do a mix of the two. It's not that it, it's not that big of a deal if you do or don't use identity roles. But I'm just simply pointing out that you need to pass in the some sort of class here that is going to be of a type role. And I'm going to use the identity role class, which comes by default with ASP.NET Core Identity. Uh, now, I do need to bring in a using here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a control period. And I'm going to say using Microsoft.ASP.NET Core Identity Entity Framework Core. So now that I have that in there, we can go ahead and add some more components to our ASP.NET Core identity by just doing a dot, and we just can add some different uh, methods to this add identity method. Now the first one I'm gonna need to use is the add entity framework stores. And this is where we're actually linking the identities or the users and the entity framework store. So we had it both here in the context and we're also basically establishing it here in our startup class. So I once again need to pass in a context here in this case. So this is going to be our Contoso context as a type parameter. And then one other thing that I want to go ahead and add here is the add default token providers. And the token providers are essentially a really handy way of um, allowing you to identify users kind of temporarily. And if I just kind of look into this here, if I just do a right click and go to the definition, 
and I'm just going to expand this out here. You can see it adds the default token providers used to generate tokens for reset passwords, to change emails, to change telephone numbers, and for two-factor authentication token generation. So it's basically creating tokens for users on a temporary basis so they can do things like resetting passwords and changing emails, that sort of thing. So it's good to go ahead and add that to your ASP.NET Core identity right up front. The last thing we need to do is just to go down here to the configure method and on the app object we need to go ahead and say we want to include this identity, this ASP.NET Core identity as part of the uh, the middleware pipeline. So we're going to do app dot uh, use identity. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now I'm going to go out to SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm just going to take a look at the Contoso database that exists on our local DB projects v13. This is the database of our Contoso application. And we can see the contacts table and the customers table, as well as our EF migrations history table, which kind of keeps track of all of the entity framework migrations that we do. So right now we don't have any user tables associated with this database because we haven't really told it to go ahead and create those. Now, how do you suppose that we should go ahead and create those tables in our application? Do you think we should do some sort of uh, migration? Should we add a migration and then update it to the database? Or do we need to manually add them to the database? Or is there something maybe that's going to happen automatically right in the background? Well, let's just go ahead and run our application and see what happens. So here we are with our application open. And if we go to our SQL Server Management Studio, if I right click on tables and do a refresh, we have, oh darn it, no new tables. Well, one of the things I just kind of wanted to point out here is that depending upon whether or not you have already previously created your context or not, uh, you would, you may or may not get these tables automatically populated at this point. If you have not done a migration, you haven't already built your context, and you just create your context brand spanking now, and you know, build that context off of the identity DB context with an application user passed in, you very well might go ahead and get all of the tables generated for you automatically. So we didn't get it here because we already created that, con uh, that Contoso context and we already you know, created the database based upon it. So we are going to need to go ahead and add a migration. So I'm gonna go ahead and do add migration to the con, uh, I do need to do context, and it's going to be Contoso context, and I think I forgot to add a name here. So we're going to do add migration, and the name is going to be, let's say, uh, identity added. Okay, we'll try that. Hit enter. So we've created our migration. If we look in our migration that's been created here, and it's actually existing underneath our migrations folder, we can see now we have this new ASP.NET users table that it would want to create, and all of the information about that. We have an ASP.NET roles, we have an ASP.NET user tokens, we have user claims, etc. We've got all sorts of good table information that's gonna be add date, uh, added when we go ahead and update the database. So I'm just gonna close that, go back into the package manager. We're gonna do an update database. And now that that information is updated to the database, and yes, we did get a warning because we're not really doing some proper uh, securing of some sensitive information. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but uh, for right now, don't worry about this warning just yet. Uh, we can take a look now at our database, and if we refresh our tables, it looks like it doesn't work. And you know what? I just realized it's because I forgot to mention the context. So <laughs> silly me. Yes, uh, context, Contoso, context. Let's try that again. All right, so it's done updating our database. And now let's try this one more time. And if we refresh the tables, we should see. There we go. There's our ASP.NET role claims table, ASP.NET roles, claims, logins, 
etc. So we have now all of the necessary tables for ASP.NET Core identity installed on our database and everything is linked up between our application now and the database and we're ready to go. Yeah.